Today I'm at the Fort of Brokolitia at Karabaruf on Hadrian's Wall, uh, just approaching the entrance to the fort where the East Gate would have stood. So we'll start our visit just walking up the east side of the rampart towards the line of Hadrian's Wall. We've now reached the northeast corner of the fort and we're just going to head west now along the dry stone wall. Through the gate we can see the military road which was built in the 18th century on top of the foundations of the curtain wall. It's possible the fort dates to about 130 AD, whereas Hadrian's Wall dates from 122. The fort was probably added because there was rather a large gap between Housestead's fort and Chester's down in the valley. The fort, well and Mithraeum are both now in the care of English heritage. Various building inscriptions found over the years has indicated that cohorts of Aquitanians, Batavians and Tungrians, amongst others, uh, once occupied the fort. Little excavation has been done on site. The granaries and headquarters building have been uncovered as well as sections of the wall. I'm just heading towards the west gate now with the Vallum running alongside the military road ahead. Uh, we'll just take a look at the remains of what's left of the west gate. Just walking across the site, there's plenty of lumps and bumps, overgrown sections of masonry lie below. It's a fascinating site for future research. So I'm now approaching the west gate of the fort, um, excavated many, many years ago, actually in the 19th century. Uh, remains of the guard tower can be seen just as an overgrown square, and I'm just actually walking out through the portal, which was blocked in the later Roman period. So now it's back onto the western rampart, just heading south. And to my left, just as the sun's setting, you can actually see the remains of the western ditch that was built to defend the fort, still showing up in the landscape nicely. The vallum is just behind my head, along with the military road. You can just see the reeds marking the line of the ditch. Along the fort walls, interval towers were built and uh, this is one of them just partially excavated. You see some huge masonry blocks still visible, uh, which can't be seen later on in summer as the vegetation goes. So now is a good time to actually go and see these uh, scant remains of the fort still above ground. Again, the west ditch of the fort is still very, very visible in the landscape. So just proceeding along to the southwest corner now, ahead of us lies the Mithraeum, which was excavated in the 1940s, just appearing over the edge. And it's just a matter of just descending down off the corner of the fort rampart and head to the stile to reach the Mithraeum. The plan of the Roman bathhouse does exist from a, an antiquarian excavation around this spot here. Unfortunately it's been lost since then but the building must lie in this area somewhere. For those walking the Hadrian's Wall National Footpath you'll actually find that the temple is right alongside the trail itself so it's very easy to visit. Worshippers at the Temple of Mithras must have used a very similar route to approach it. The building would have been partially buried to give it a subterranean, cave-like appearance. Several temples to Mithras have been discovered at different forts along Hadrian's Wall, but this is the only one that's excavated and visible to the public. First evidence for the Mithraeum is around the early 3rd century and it was adapted after that and used for about 100 years before its abandonment. Many organic elements of the temple survived remarkably well due to the waterlogged conditions. They've now been taken for conservation and concrete posts have been put in their place. The altars are in the Great North Museum, the Hancock in Newcastle, well worth seeking out if you get the chance. 
the three altars that stand in the temple today are replicas but um, you can see on the left an image of Mithras and the altar has been cut out so an all that would have been placed behind light would have radiated out into the subterranean temple giving quite an effect to the worshippers. And painted the altars would have been quite a garish colour to our eyes. The worship of Mithras was a very secretive religion and very little is known actually about what ceremonies went on in here a lot of it is surmised. The growing power of Christianity in the 4th century in the Roman Empire really marked the end of the worship of Mithras around the, uh, around the Roman world. And the temple was abandoned, possibly destroyed or that surmised, and then left to be covered over by nature again until discovered in the 20th century. Now we return to the fort via its southwest corner. Uh, a tower would have stood just about here. All we have now are the turf covered remains of the wall. Now we're back in the fort. I'm just going to head along the south wall of the rampart. Just overlooking on the right, there's a very thin ditch which was probably recut in the 4th century. Now we've reached the southeast corner of the fort, it's now just time to turn the corner and uh, head up back to the car park along the eastern rampart. Once again, thanks for watching, and if you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel, it helps me create more content.